right, welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, we've just heard George Soros acknowledge we're in the second act of a world economic uh, crisis. It's a depression, needless to say, compared to the 1930s. He's basically admitting it. Helicopter Ben Bernanke is trying to sing the Pollyanna song. Uh, the, Euro- the collapse of Europe won't have much effect on the U.S. That's already malarkey. You can see, just look at the... Uh, the increased churning and, and volatility and panic breaks in the U.S. stock market to see how false that is. Uh, there is a wolf pack of hedge funds attacking uh, Europe, uh, as Galbraith admits. But in order to stop that wolf pack, you've got to have uh, direct anti-speculator measures. Ban hedge funds. Ban credit default swaps. Ban col- uh, synthetic collateralized debt obligations, synthetic CDOs or CDO squares. And above all, the Tobin tax across the board, 1%. If these instruments are so wonderful and so creative and so precious, then they can bear their fair share of the tax burden under which the rest of us are groaning, right? We pay sales tax. Wall Street, hedge fund hyenas, zombie bankers pay nothing. And remember, this stuff about interest carried forward. In other words, the way in which hedge fund hyenas pad their income at the expense of the public treasury no, they should that what they call carried forward interest has to be taxed as income. It's not uh, capital gains. It's compensation, and it's got to be taxed. And no further extension of this uh, capital gains honeymoon for fat cats instituted by Mad Dog Bush the Younger. Now, even though uh, George Soros acknowledges that credit default swaps are a license to kill, uh, he's always been a phrase maker, license to kill. He says, don't do anything about it. Don't touch them. Don't regulate them. Well, the Italian independent magistrates, notice under the Italian system, it's not a centralized thing where the U.S. attorney in Texas has to ask Eric Holder there at Maine Justice whether they can prosecute a case, and it's all centralized through uh, Washington. The Italian system, the magistrates are independent, and uh, to a very large degree, they can bring cases that they want. And the, uh, there is a, a council, the uh, superior council of the magistrate, magistracy that uh, oversees them, but this is mainly uh, ethical questions. And there is a justice minister, but they can go ahead and do what they want. So here we have a very interesting case. In the tribunal there in Milan, we have got uh, the prosecuting judge, Alfredo Robledo, R-O-B-L-E-D-O. So Robledo uh, is, pr- is prosecuting a case, U- UBS, Union Bank of Switzerland, the Switzerland, Deutsche Bank, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase are facing charges of aggravated fraud concerning an interest rate swap on a um, it's a it's a bond issue by the city of Milan 1.68 billion euros or approximately 2 billion US dollars 13 people face criminal charges in this case now the idea is that uh Italy has far more in the way of these derivatives than even Greece, Portugal, and Spain. Italy faces greater risks from billions of euros in sour derivative deals than does Greece. Now, here's the difference. These are fast-talking salesmen from uh, J.P. Morgan Chase or Deutsche or UBS who go to municipalities, right, cities, provinces, uh, local regional local governments, 500 small and large Italian cities uh, have been lured into derivatives speculation, which have now gone bad, and they're facing losses of up to 2.5 billion euros on these uh, contracts. Um, So... It's essentially the uh, the banks now, these hedge fund hyenas, zombie bankers, derivatives pirates want to be paid. And the question is, well, should there still be police, fire, and teaching going on in Milan, or should Deutsche Bank and J.P. Morgan Chase and UBS get their money? You know the answer to this. 
civilization must prevail over the rapacious demands of speculators and other sociopaths. Um, so we've got Robledo uh, says, Italy is more at risk than Greece, above all because of derivatives contracts. There is an enormous and concrete problem in Italy because there are many bubbles in the hands of cities, provinces, and regions that sooner or later will blow up, but nobody knows when, he told reporters. Now, they're also bringing in uh, one of the um, better-known Italian investigating judges, Oscar Maggi, is coming in to take over the case. Uh, we hope that he prosecutes this very, very vigorously. So here's another area of legislation. We need to ban governments, regional and local governments, from entering into derivatives contracts. When we ban credit default swaps, uh, which I think we have to do, and collateralized CDOs, or indeed all CDOs, we've got to add a special proviso that under no circumstances is the U.S. government, any state, any county, any city, any subdivision of government, or any authority backed by government, the Port Authority of New York, or whatever it is. No derivatives. Ban on all derivatives. These are dangerous speculative investments. We don't want them. They are toxic. They are highly destructive. So this, these are basically the outlines of the crisis. Now, uh, in terms of the financial reform bill that is now uh, in uh, the House Senate Conference Committee Reconciliation Committee, obviously, Rambozo Emanuel and his uh, legions of greed from Wall Street are trying to gut this as much as they possibly can. And I would urge people, uh, even though this is now uh, largely a lost cause because of the uh, Obama regime and their uh, subservience to uh, Barkey's masters there in Wall Street. The one thing that still might get through are the Blanche Lincoln provisions. Uh, this Part of this has got to do with they, they need to, to uh, respect Blanche Lincoln a little bit because otherwise they're going to lose that, that seat there in Arkansas. Blanche Lincoln is a born-again economic populist. She came up with these provisions saying that banks are not allowed to trade derivatives. Uh, derivatives have nothing to do with the activity of a commercial bank, um, not part of the business model. Therefore, you can't do it. That has got to be kept, if at all possible. That would be a, a possibility of making it harder for banks to bankrupt themselves with these toxic uh, instruments. But you've got to watch the usual Wall Street shills Barney Frank, Chris Dodd, this uh, corker, he's really a corker from, uh, from Tennessee, and, and so forth. The other thing that's, that's um, economic, the situation in the Senate is that there was a proposal brought forward by Madame Murkowski of um, Alaska to try to stop the Environmental Protection Agency under these Malthusian lunatics that we know from trying to implement restrictions on carbon emissions without benefit of law, simply under regulations, right? simply as a matter of decree. Uh, and that ban um, did fairly well, but it didn't go through. So 47 to 53, the Senate still says that uh, there is no ban on the Environmental Protection Agency lunatics from imposing these uh, carbon limit. However, the fate of the cap and trade looks very, very dubious. Every day goes by, it becomes less likely. And we'll see you back in a minute here on World Crisis Radio. 